Hey y'all, it's Anime Cameron, and today I'm going to be live reacting to Ground Bell in episode 12. I'm going to start this live reaction in 1 0 go. Alright, let's see what we're going to get. Alright. Got rain in this backdrop. It won't happen. Hmm. Oh my. Oh. So wait. She has been in previous ground bell tournaments then? Okay, um <laughs> Damn. At least I look like Seashell. It's hella interesting. Hmm. Alright, alright, alright. Now, hopefully, Shingetsu is the one that can finally be accepted as a princess mage, hopefully. Because I'm gonna feel hella trolled if this tournament ends. And no one is accepted as a princess mage. I'll be like, what the fuck? If they went that route, you know? But, we'll just have to wait and see. Hmm. Let's see if there's anything in the opening that I might have missed in previous episodes. Um, no, for the most part, everything's... Everything looks fine for the most part. Hmm. I just wonder, though, if they're gonna have... The, the whole final battle in this episode, or is it going to be a two-parter? Because sometimes animes, they like to have the final battle from second to last, and they love to leave the last episode as sort of like an epilogue. And I'm kind of hoping it takes that approach, because if they literally have the fight go from this to episode 13, we're likely going to have a super rushed ending. Likely. Hopefully that ain't the case, but we'll see. At least I believe the thing in the beginning was a flashback. Hmm. It could also be in the flash forward too, for all I know. Oh my. That thing doesn't... Oh. Oh snap! So is she gonna bring the big guns from the get-go then? By so many that he humongous ass object? Or what? <laughs> oh my... I guess that explains why all the battles take place when there's a full moon, then. Hmm. That actually puts a lot of things into perspective. Oh. <laughs> I love that under the face! <laughs> The only thing I'm kind of curious about is Shishio's wish, though. I'm kind of curious to hear what it actually is. Because it's gonna be... Don't get me wrong, we all know Shishio's a bitch! But...
For more sticks, it'd be better if we knew what our actual wish was. Uh. Mm. <laughs> Damn, she's holding back. But then again, it is the final battle. <laughs> no use holding back at this point. And technically, the last person got eliminated, Shigetsu. Nice plot twist. It actually balances things out pretty well. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, shit. Okay, this is getting epic now. Oh. Holy shit. So that explains why she's an overpowered motherfucker. So that explains the beginning sequence then. All right. And I'm assuming her craziness because she's been having to fight in these ground belts for multiple years that she's getting sick and tired of going through the process and she just wants to be the princess mage. That actually helps explain her insanity. <laughs> oh shit! Alright. And I like how she's throwing those words into her face, too. As if telling her, even if you win, bitch, you probably won't even become a princess mage. Epic music. <laughs> Damn. Yo, it's <laughs> okay. I'm loving this. Okay, and now she shows gotta be fucked. She lost the giant spirit thing that she was using. Oh. I remember that's the spirit that Mongetsu was trying to summon. Man, um, mm. damn. Damn, I'm not gonna this is pretty fucking bias. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> Just paying out fire off. My goodness, Shingetsu. <laughs> Actually, kind of love this now. 
Because originally you didn't have much of an emotional connection between Shingetsu and Shishu, but now you actually do, narratively. Actually, I like this. Because now she's got jealousy at the... at the premise of the Makia Countess blessing Shingetsu. Yes! Okay. Yo, I thought they actually wrecked that thing. Okay. We gotta hope that Mongetsu can unleash that berserker-like attack that she unleashed a few episodes ago. You know? Yo, did she actually finish off Mongetsu? I mean, Shingetsu. Damn. Oh yeah, true. With Shingetsu gone, there's gonna she's pretty much got no power source. If she gets to sticking down, Miles will prevent that she shall bitch from becoming a princess mage also. Uh, that'd be nice. Hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with that though. But then again, that doesn't surprise me from a person that was only interested in all these... ...and only fighting, so... It's not surprising that Shigetsu would think those type of emotions are ugly. Getsu. Hmm. And that's actually. Oh, I actually love the visual quality. Gives you a scope, pal. A nice scope of the power levels. You chose the one throwing out purple fire. Alright, I'm loving this fight. Oh, shit. 
kind of giving me like deal vibes when deal just surrounded Jotaro with all these freaking knives. Hell yeah. True, sure, because you're not a doll if you have free will and your own ambitions. I actually like this. You can see her confidence, the confidence I'm gonna get to didn't have before, and that's what really makes the sequence really beautiful too. Cause she's saying all this while her hands are all doll style. It's actually pretty cool. Kind of giving you themes of even though someone may not be human in flesh and blood form, they might be human if they have goals and ambitions and emotions. I like how this episode kind of brings up these questions during this specific fight scene. Yo, she actually survived! <laughs> okay! <laughs> oh, so from the data that she got from Nene, Aww. I actually kind of like that. It actually makes the Nana's defeat more impactful in the series. Hmm. Oh. So pretty much Shingetu's. I mean, I'll get this operating like a crash test dummy. You know, and figuratively, I mean. Damn. Snap. I also kind of like the subtle message in this fight scene too. The subtle message of, since right now, she is just so, so entwined into winning all of this that she isn't really paying attention to her surroundings. She isn't paying attention to the fact as to why is Mangetsu still there? Because if Mangetsu is still there, that means Shingetsu must still be around. So I kind of like that. Showing you how the short sinus of Shisho is probably gonna likely fuck her over. Yo, now those look like some beastie ass spells. Alright, good. Distraction. Oh wait, or maybe it worked. Hmm. True enough. You always have inventors trying to like invent the best things possible, or craftsmanship building wonderful things. And they only build a certain amount to an extent where if they pass away, it's always the new up to the new generation to help build the world even more. I also think that's the message of this sequence right here too. Hmm. I'm actually loving this. So many themes intertwined into a singular episode. 
with Vakuda Pinta having a wondrous fight scene right now going on. So, oh, okay, for a second I thought her grand bell was about to blow up. I'm an Armanox. <laughs> I hope she makes that she shall be deceived. I hope. Yo, okay. This is gonna be like some Dragon Ball Z vibes right now. I love it! <laughs> Kinda reminds you of when Goku and Vegeta were using their Kamehameha and Gallic Gun attacks. <laughs> I love this! And the epic music too. It's great to see that the composer saved his ace in the hole. Oh, snap. She's got a choice. It's either she wins uh, all this or saves Mongetsu, but. <sighs> no. Fuck! Gotta admit, she went down like a boss. <sighs> oh. Man. That she show cunt just disgusts me. Gotta say, the her actress just had a wonderful execution of that line. <laughs> Damn, that did not feel like 22 minutes. That felt like freaking 10 minutes. I want to see the rest of it. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna rate this episode a 10, a 10. My goodness, with all these revelations, like finding out so that. Shisho's been the winner of so many of these, so many of these tournaments. And that shit is crazy. And that also helps explain a lot of things too. It explains why she was so overpowered and why she was confident. Even though there was a possibility of Kuan, Mangetsu, and Shingeto taking her on simultaneously. That explains why she never really felt scared and she was cocky as fuck. That actually puts everything into perspective. And then not just that. I like how in this way, this episode also gives us glimpses into Shishio's personality because even though we haven't had much less of life sequences with her, when she says how Monketsu's emotions are ugly when it comes to her killing for her family or friends and stuff of that nature. It pretty much tells us all we need to know about Shisho's personality. She's selfish. She doesn't interact with much people. <gasps> so wait! Alright. Hopefully it's our girl Shingetsu. Alright, alright, alright. Oh, man. Wait, you see Mongetsu there at the end. So, kind of feels like they're... I mean, not Mongetsu, Shingetsu. It kind of feels like they're spoiling the winner. Unless that could be like Shingetsu's inner thoughts. But I gotta say, though. Wow, this episode impressed me because it gave you so much information on Shisho's 
personality without even showing you her actual life. Because going by how the way she was talking, that means she doesn't interact with people and she probably has a boring ass life. That pretty much implies that she's got the life where she only thinks about these battles with the Almanoxes and that's about it. So I actually do love that specifically about this episode. Giving us so much just through her actions and the way she interacts with Mongetsu. Then on top of that, I like how this episode also shows you the Shingetsu character development because she actually was legitimately in distress when Mangetsu was destroyed and I love that sequence because it shows off that the, the how much she's grown because Shingetsu went from an individual that didn't really have any deep bonds with anyone to now being distressed with the person that she had a deep bond with passing away so you see her grow as in character and additionally, aside from that, I love how they put Nene here too as a factor where she was the one that gave her like this device that allowed her the ground ball of Shingetsu to turn invisible. So, so, so all in all, I'm loving this episode. It's taking all of these factors and piecing them all together in a neat bow. So that's why I felt from a character and story standpoint, it was phenomenal. And from a story standpoint, it was phenomenal. Was there only being two Armanox users left, now we're gonna get into the sweet ass climax. So we made a lot of plot progression, visuals and music were spectacular, and that's why this episode was just exceptional, y'all. So anyways everyone, these are my thoughts on Grand Bone episode 12. Be sure to comment out your thoughts on the episode in the comment section below, rate the video, subscribe, share it, and I'll see you guys later if you come back for more. All right, y'all, have a safe day, everyone. Bye-bye.